Holbrook New Media. This is Jeffrey K. Holbrook. Welcome to the audio feed from HolbrookNewMedia.com. Today, Jeff and Jeffrey, the weekly catch up. We hope you enjoy the audio version. If you want to see what we look like, I will embed the video for this episode at HolbrookNewMedia.com. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff Blanchard. And I'm Jeffrey K. Holbrook, and this is the Weekly Catch-Up. And we're back. Yes, we are. <laughs> yes, we are. Week late because we're going to have our 50th show last week, but I had some meetings and had some work things, and I thought the last thing I want to do is talk for another hour. <laughs> so you, you just <laughs> I don't like, blame you there. And, and I tell you what, it was the worst week to miss out on because then I heard about your, not fantastic, <laughs> thing, but your, your encounter with uh, – Somebody who just well, it sounded like Goldilocks a bit, didn't it? So, uh, there have there have been those jokes. I mean, um, yeah, we, we thought we wouldn't have anything special to talk about on our 50th, but it does appear that there is. Uh, yes, uh, I did promise to give some people a uh, sleeping burglar update, was what I was calling it. <laughs> oh, yes. So explain to the people who haven't seen it yet. So. <laughs> okay. What's, happening, what's happened here was... Um, uh, on Father's Day morning, the uh, 18th of June, uh, I came home from work, uh, put the car in the garage, made all kinds of noise, you know, doing that. Then I came up to the front door, up the stairs, and noticed that all the lights in the house were on. Um, the door was standing wide open. Uh, I stepped inside, and the two doors were smashed there were the french doors the glass was smashed out of that sliding glass door was smashed we had two large um, uh, really high on the wall we had two it's 120 year old stained glass windows that were smashed uh dents in the walls where somebody had spent some time trying to smash the glass <laughs> and um, anyway as, as it turned out i i called 911 which is you know the emergency call and they were sending the police over, it turned out the, the county sheriff's deputies. And so I am walking around and, uh, you know, documenting the um, damage. And so I do the first floor and I'm walking around and like you say, the place is trashed. I mean, there's a piece of firewood in the floor and I mean, there's smashed uh, stoneware, pottery, different things around our daughter's pottery from the... Um, you know, she made in school was smashed and, you know, just, just the right, but it didn't seem anything was stolen. And I'm commenting on that. And then I go upstairs and I'm still talking to the video and everything's fine. I walk into the bedroom and there is someone asleep in my bed. Um, that, must have been <laughs> <laughs> um, that was definitely the proverbial rude awakening for me anyway. But uh, the Goldilocks joke is the fact that the person set up shop evidently on the couch for a while and got a uh, gallon pitcher, it was about a third of a gallon of Kool-Aid out of the refrigerator and a glass out of the uh, cabinet and and got some pillows and blankets and set themselves up on the couch and just sat there and drank the Kool-Aid. And I guess they slept for a while. And then as it turns out, they went upstairs. And uh, I mean, but the whole point, every, everything they were doing, uh, they did a destruction, but then uh, they were looking for pill bottles, you know, of just oh. whatever, like for... Uh, they pulled out vitamins and they pulled out, you know, over the counter stuff. But, you know, if they were looking for anything exciting, this was definitely the wrong house for that. There was no alcohol in the house. There's no, I mean, it's just kind of a dry county here. So, uh, but anyway, this person was sleeping in the bed. Now at that point I could see the, that there was a person in the bed and I didn't know male, female, didn't know anything about it, but this person was there. And so I'm videoing during the discovery and, um, anyway, uh, uh, the video kind of went viral. <laughs> I mean, all over the world, even in England, the Mirror, the you know, the Daily Mail. I mean, all these different websites have got this video on it, and uh, uh, it was a bit of a an inter interesting discovery. <laughs> do, you, do you know honestly? Do you know what I thought when I first saw it? 
Mm. I thought, what a title is is created now to get a few views on one of our shows. <laughs> I thought, hang on a bit, how is that you know, like when you do a creative title? And I thought, now how does that match in with it? Like, oh, it's for real, it's real. <laughs> it's not that it's something different. And then I saw the video because I thought it was like, well, I thought it was a cryptic title. I thought, how does that match into uh, one of our shows? <laughs> but, <it> was, <laughs> uh, but I tell you one thing though. It's given a, a nice good house tour, so I know exactly where your studio is. Oh, yes, I know yes, you do. Yes, you do. Over the, the rest of the house when you come out of the studio and that. So I've got a fair idea. And when I know you now, I know when you're playing your PlayStation and drinking your Kool Aid, I know where yeah. you will be. If someone else isn't <laughs> drinking my Kool Aid. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, like you say, hopefully, hopefully the, the only problem is it's going to give you the the trashed version of my house, <laughs> which uh, you know, is pretty sad. Uh, um, but, uh, but I mean, you could see the things that he'd thrown, thrown around the place, but I thought, mm -hmm. yeah, why, why do they have to do that? They, they could just go and look for the pills nicely. They don't have to throw things through stained glass windows. As you said, it's <laughs> why do the, and I th saw the smashed other windows and you thought, well, you've got in, so why do you have to smash any more? You don't I, yeah, I, like you say, there was a there just appears to be this period of time of rage of some type. Now, whether it was, mm. I mean, again, but but the stained glass windows are interesting. I mean, like you say, they're they're not replaceable. It's 120 years old, or these windows are, and which in America is is a long time. <laughs> no, it's not much in England, but still in America, that's a long time. And so, um, there was a definite problem with these windows and you can see on the video how they are up on the wall, but there's dents in the sheetrock and stuff all around the windows where it took a few tries to actually hit them. Uh, mm -hmm. One of them, you know, on the pictures, one of them, there's a couple of uh, pine boards that, you know, I had playing sitting beside the fireplace in a little crock. You know, you can get a, a fire started easily with one of those. And then you use regular firewood, got a couple of those and threw them right through it. And, um, and then the other side, they picked up a big, heavy salt shaker. I had gone to work, but I ate my dinner right there in the uh, living room. And I left this big, you know, Himalayan pink salt shaker right there. It's really heavy. Threw it and hit the other window and then hit it also with, with another smaller object. But actually hit the caning on that instead of going straight through. And actually loosened the other one in the frame. Um it's hard to see in the picture without it being daylight, but loosened it in a frame. And so did not bust the plexiglass on that one, but the, they did break all the way through the plexiglass on the, uh, the, the nearer one, wherever I, I first came in, right when I went up the stairs. But yeah, it's, uh, you know, on the video is definitely the trashed version of our house. We plan on, you know, we're in the process of very slowly trying to get everything put, put back together. Uh, not, not very funny. Uh, I do did, did, go ahead. They didn't. Take it didn't take anything though. Was it just just was looking for pills uh, and so drank the Kool Aid. Taken. Did find a bottle of uh, some of the bottles I pulled out upstairs was um, Advil PM, which is a pain reliever, sleep aid yeah. type of a pill, and they they were blue, so I don't know if if they look familiar or blue or something. But uh, <laughs> then this person was actually sleeping in the bed. Mm. <laughs> but that's that's the thing is you. You just get a bit because you can't they better not wake them because you never know with drugs these days they're in just a crazy state sometimes so you best just leave them alone until the authorities so how long after you stopped the video did the authorities get there Was um, it five minutes? uh <laughs> yeah no no like you say i stopped the video i got home about 15 to 4 in the morning and you saw whenever they were arresting him it was about it turned from 403 to 404 on the clock mm -hmm. that was in the morning and so probably from the time I made the first call, they had a little bit of a hard time finding my driveway being such a rural area. And so right after I turned the video off, I was in the mirror and I said, I'm going to turn the video off. Uh, I called 911 again and told them, hey, you know, I called a little bit ago. And by the way, uh, there's you know, somebody sleeping in my bed and they're still here, you know. So, And then I just went out and met them, uh, walked down the, the driveway to make it easier for them to find my house. And then, uh, you know, met the uh, deputies there and then just come in the house. And I asked, you know, Hey, can I, can I video the arrest? Sure. You know, I mean, how, how often online do you see uh, 
policemen acting polite and actually doing their jobs without beating on somebody. It's not exciting video if they're not, you know, if you don't have the police beating somebody. So, you know, very people made comments. Of course, there's trolls that showed up within a few hours making, you know, harsh uh, things, hoping I would respond to them. And then, that, you know, you could have a big fight or something. You don't feed them. You don't have any trouble. But uh, you have police officers that are doing what they're supposed to do. And they were polite to me. They were trying, it, it's kind of an absurd situation. They're trying not to laugh, but they were polite to me. They were polite to him, you know, uh, just dealing with uh, the situation. I do have a subpoena to, I have to uh, appear at the courthouse uh, today at two o'clock. Okay. So, um, and then, of course, I had to work in the evening. So after the show, I probably won't hang around very long. I'll probably sleep. I'll get about three or four hours, and then I'll have to get up and go over to the courthouse. <laughs> oh, well, it, it's uh, just quite amazing, though. Like they say, the, the police get a hard rap a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. But it's just said, like, you did the right thing. You asked them, do you mind if I film? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, where they get into trouble, they just stick a camera in front of the faces don't even give them the courtesy of asking because most of them won't mind because the they've got to but the they're supposed to be abiding by them so it shouldn't be have nothing to be ashamed of filming and it's your house right. so it's uh, it doesn't matter but as i said if they did say no it could no please don't you would have just listened to them and understood that you said well where some people get up to, oh it's my right to do that and then mm -hmm. they become a bit of an argument but i've got a lot of time for authorities that they we've got they've got a bit of a campaign here where it's about people abusing you know the ambulance workers doctors nurses policemen police women all that sort of thing so people there are trying to help you and then you and then you and the, one of the adverts says you know a nurse it says i'm here trying to help you and you spit at me mm -hmm. and there's really some horrible adverts but just showing says you know i'm trying to save your life and you thump me <laughs> you just think just people have got it wrong haven't they just for mm -hmm. uh, i don't know what again these two guys there was a uh, uh you know a sergeant uh i believe his name was a sergeant or anyway but then there was the depth this regular deputy and uh you know so the higher officer got here first and then he actually handed it off to the other guy you know, to, to the deputy and um they were completely polite completely professional um you know and like you say they uh, they, they were encouraging me actually they seemed encouraged about me videoing i guess of course that's mm -hmm. full-blown evidence i don't know i'll go over to the courthouse today and again i'm not familiar with the criminal procedures so much uh i've been on juries before but i know that you know there's the thing where they plead guilty or innocent and there's the arraignment there's a, you know and i don't i'm not familiar with all these steps but um you know i guess i'm going to have to uh, you know just tell what i saw and testify or whatever or maybe if they need me or whatever but as far as like doing you know the C csi type stuff and everything you know dna and you know if, <laughs> fingerprint stuff like that i mean I, a little cut and dried on this one i think so it should be interesting to see but there's another interesting thing too uh, videos where a gun owner doesn't shoot somebody you know because we've talked about me owning guns and what you would do on a home invasion um i totally had guns available i mean i was within about three steps of two separate guns that i could have picked up at any time when I walked into the room, I didn't know if I had woken the guy up because I was talking loud whenever I walked in. And I didn't know it was a guy. I, didn't, I just, there's a person there. So, you know, then I stop in, you hear me go, and oh. then I back <laughs> up, you know, and then, then I mean, first I look kind of toward the claws for a second, then I start backing up. And instead of going downstairs, I went down the balcony. So people wonder, why did you do that? Well, we have a Jack and Jill bathroom between the two bedrooms. So I go down there, I go in the room, and then you see me look back out into the into the balcony area to see if he had come out to look for me. Mm -hmm. He didn't come out. Now, if he had come out, I was going to go back around through the bathroom, and then there was an easily accessible handgun I could have picked up, and then I would have been behind him, and now we can talk. You know, but mm. that was the plan when I came down the balcony instead of going directly down the stairs. So, but then he didn't come out. Uh, absolutely no need for a confrontation. 
uh, I saw, you know, I could see that the police would probably appreciate being able to wake the guy up and arrest him as opposed to, you know, some kind of big fight going on. Plus, I go walking out of the house with a handgun in my hand, walking up to a police car. I, that yeah. didn't seem like a very good scenario either. So, you know, it just made sense. Okay, they're available if you need them. I was not in immediate danger. So it made total sense not to uh, put a gun into play because, you know. They, don't, just, know you're, they, don't, you're, they don't know you're the good guy yet, do they? <laughs> uh, no, and, at, and at, the same time, at the same time, even after they get the guy out of bed and get him arrested, and the original officer, you know, drives away with him. The other guy's there to take the report and everything like that. They asked for my driver's license and ran my driver's license to see, I guess, if I was the owner or I could have been the perpetrator for that matter and, and then got the homeowner arrested, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you never know. You could have said, "Yeah, that he's, you've doped him up, so he doesn't know who he is." And uh, just, he had no is idea. Take him away, because you really don't know. It could be something like that, where you said, "No, you've doped up the homeowner and got him arrested." So then, then you know, they won't be back. He'll be too far out of it, and that. So, mm -hmm. but I uh, suppose he was thinking, because as I said, being late, that oh, nobody's going to be back tonight. I'm, I'm okay. At least you know nobody will come over this time of night. So, well, just just what I could see that I, if he remembers anything that happened while he was here, I'm not really sure because the only frame of reference reference he seemed to have was what the deputy was saying. Yeah, you know, mm, he was. Yeah, you, you know, you could just yeah. see him looking around, and and he would say, you know, first he's saying, you know, show us your hands, you know, uh, get out of bed, and you know, and he just politely followed the orders because he looked at me, and there was not even what am I doing in this guy's house? What's this guy doing in my house? I mean, it was just like a human is over there. That was really mm -hmm. all, all the, that I could see that he recognized <laughs> and, and he's just, uh, you know, and so, you know, then when I looked down at the, at the counter where the, uh, you know, at the dresser where the, uh, uh, clock was at and stuff, you could see the time, <laughs> all those bottles he had pulled out of the drawer down below and like you say, the one he had opened up was the Advil PM. So I don't know if he took any or not. They haven't told me anything. But, you know, something that puts you to sleep. What an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. it, turn, it turns out that he, uh, he has been charged with two felonies. Um, the first one is um, they call it, okay, and they make a specific thing about this. Again, this is all new to me because I'm not familiar much with mm -hmm. criminal procedures. But it's a nighttime burglary is the first charge. So it's different from nighttime or daytime. Right. I guess if you do it at night, you're actually putting the homeowners in danger most of the time. Mm. The only reason why my wife was not here whenever he broke in was because my mother was starting some uh, radiation treatments in Florida and my wife was down there to help her get started with that. So that's why that she was not in the house and it was just, you know, he was able to get in alone. Um, that's a good thing probably for mm -hmm. him as well as her. Um, but at the same time, um, he got nighttime burglary and then they have a certain amount that if the damage structural damage to the home is above a certain amount, then that is a second felony. And so he's been charged with two felonies, um, $50,000 bond to get out of jail. And they did say he did make bond, which you can do oh, that. Yeah. You don't have to have 50,000 in cash. You can actually just put a lien on your residence and get out, you know, like that way. Um, I'm, you know, who knows? I don't know his situation. I do know he was married because his wife had reported him missing, like a missing person. He'd been gone for two days. And so she had reported him missing and they were kind of looking for him anyway. Um, so like you say, I, I don't know his situation at all. Didn't know him. Uh, he lives about 15 miles from here. Uh, and again, uh, you know, as far as like, <laughs> you know, hating the guy, no, I don't. I, it's no. <laughs> kind of sad, you know, the situation yeah. he was in. We do have some damage that cannot be made right. The stained glass windows. Now we, we got the cat back. The cat was gone for about 40 oh, hours. Mate. Yeah, we got, we got her back. Uh, but like you say, the, the stained glass windows, even if you fix them with modern materials or whatever, they'll never be what they were before. I mean, they were completely intact, uh, taken out of a, a church that was torn down several, several years ago. They've been in the house since we've been here. They, they were put in before we've been here 23 years. First time we've had any trouble of any kind of anybody actually coming up to the house. It's an isolated area. There's no foot traffic. Um, 
within a mile of the place. And so it never occurred to me that somebody would still be here if there was no car present. And uh, that's no. why I went ahead and walked in, you know. Hey, and what's that? I saw another video of some fawns playing around. Was that in your yard too? Uh, yes, that was in the front yard out there. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, like you say, they they uh, they were grooming each other, which is funny. I just ne had never seen them. I mean, we see deer all the time, you know, where we're just mm. in such heavy, dense woods. Um, I just, I took that through through the window, <laughs> and uh, they're just out there grazing and, uh, you know, and uh, uh, grooming each other. I, I just found found out an interesting thing. <laughs> I was saying to Rick on Saturday. I said uh, I think that this uh, Galaxy Eight has created a bit of a video monster. <laughs> I said it's <laughs> video, it's video, and everything. And and I was just watching one of your uh, uh, philosophy quotes mm -hmm. this morning about you know what a true friend is. <laughs> mm -hmm. <Okay. laughs> <laughs> and I just had to, I think about at the point where it says a true friend is with somebody who won't let you down or something like yeah, that. Yeah, well, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a, uh, a Walter Winchell, it was a quote from him. It was uh, a true friend is a person who walks in when, every, when the world walks out was what it was. Yeah. But I think it was something about letting you down as well. And then the camera fell down. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And boom, there it goes again. Yeah. I mean, I, I can never tell when that thing's going to fall down because it'll hold forever. I mean, you can pull on it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And then everything's great. And then all of a sudden. Boom, you know. <laughs> <It's> a... <laughs> I always find what it does is, is when I, I know it, it always does that to me when I don't wash the windows correctly on the car, you just rub them. And that, if you wash them down and that it's, that sucker will stick there and stay forever. Mm -hmm. But then once it just gets, if you just stick it up, it will seem like it's, I've done that with my sat nav. And, you know, I was coming in once, coming uh, home from Rick's and downtown Los Angeles. And I'm coming up to this thing where there was eight lanes going every way, and I had to turn 50 different ways. And then also, all of a sudden, the sat nav fell down to the floor. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> you're, you're driving at, you know, 65 miles an hour, and you thought, I can't just stop. And you thought, oh, I'm going to just hit the, I'm, I'm going to get the wrong one anyway. I'll just have to when it pull over, just put it back. And, and or I could just hear she say, Turn left and take the second exit. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll try. Just listen to it. But yeah, was, just, just listen to what it says, yeah. No, like you say, we have these sorry. first world problems. <laughs> that's that's right, These uh, the, the satellite things on that. So. Mm -hmm. But as I said, other than that, you've been a bit quiet on your philosophy. You've had other things on your mind, I think, since uh, then. So. Yeah, like you say, we've been trying trying to do a little bit. Of, of course, I'm still working, but we're trying to. Uh, yeah. And Didi did, and did fly in uh, back home, so she, she, had, she, she had to come back. Oh, good. She, she, she back now? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, oh, good. Well, that'll make you happy anyway. That's good. But Oh, uh, sure, yeah, definitely. The cat, the, the cat is also very happy. Yeah, I also also as well uh, took the time and listened. I think it was about you, twenty five minutes with with the uh, the breakfast with your father. Yes. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, I listened to that. That was ever so good to listen to. So, but, well, thank so, you. I, I, thought, I appreciate that. It sounds like such a uh, it was a such a good man to listen to his stories as well. So, because mm -hmm. I, I just love the what we were saying about uh, the hernia operation, and uh, when the principal said, "No, you don't." You don't touch this boy. And then one of the bullies <laughs> came up to him and kneed him in the stomach and nearly crippled him. And, and the principal got him in front of the guy so with a paddle and hit him with a paddle. And then he said, Wait until I tell my father. He said, Well, it's your father who told me to do this. To <laughs> but I could just see, I'm just imagining a, a fella older than you. Uh, you know, eighty. I'd like you to, because I'm just imagining what he's looking like, say what he's talking about. But I thought it was just was such a good thing to to get as well. So, mm -hmm. and with you and the the sort of talking over it as well, we're hearing your thoughts on that. Was really really good thing to. And most people, as you say, we don't think about these things when we could just record them. They might be rubbish. Who cares? Mm -hmm. You can don't have to. But if you don't get them. You've lost, you never get them. So it was really good to put on there. So I did like that. Well, I, I appreciate that. That was, uh, that was something that, um, right after, right after he, he passed away, this was probably the following weekend. Of course, at that point I was home by myself because my wife was down, you know, helping take care of him at that time. 
And so I was by myself, but then I had this audio that I had brought back from the, uh, the trip that I had taken down there about five, five or six weeks earlier. And I was sitting there doing, doing some editing on it, you know, and just kind of tightening things up and actually reduced the amount of talking that my wife and I were doing, you know, cause it was, it, it was about him. And I came down to the end and like you say, and this was just in, I was still off from, from where he had passed away. And all of a sudden it hit me. And again, I, it, it took about three or four days, but I was working on this and all of a sudden it hit me. I am never going to get to have another conversation with him. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this is the last stuff. I mean, you know, and we did, we actually recorded three or four breakfasts, you know, that way, um, just by setting that little recorder in the middle of the table. And like you say, the audio quality wasn't the best. It was echoey and stuff like that, but it was, but it was, you know, there wasn't, we were eating breakfast and we just had a free conversation without microphones in our faces. And, you know, it was, I, we just recorded it. He he knew we were, and he knew how we were. You know, there wasn't any question about it. And uh, you know, it was it, it's just really just 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 a good free time to talk to him. And uh, like you say, one of the one of the last times ever. So I'm 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 glad we were able to record that. And and also as well with the, like you said, it's <clears throat> done in a nice situation where people do get together and just you do chat. So they're not like when if you sit somebody down and said, let's record you. It's a bit awkward, but if you sat around the breakfast table, it's just natural that you you talk, and then you forget about that somebody's recording you. And it's and the, the thing that got me is just how you do talk to your parents. Mm -hmm. It was just so natural, and and people, I think a lot of a lot of people these days miss that, don't get along with the parents that well. That the cat just talk to them and listen to what they went through, because you always think like say your your father in his eighties. You always think of them as as old people, because even no matter when you were a kid, you know, when they you know when they were in their thirties, uh, they were always old to you, yeah. and so you never think about them going to school. And when you hear stories like uh, your father was saying, you, you just think, "Gee, he was a young boy at one stage. He must have gone to school like me and been at some time. You know, he got bullied too, like everybody else. Everybody yeah. has at some time or another. So it's uh, you know people always forget." <laughs> you know, it goes. They were always young. They were young once, and I always think at the other end when I see uh, when how people badly treat older people. I think if you're lucky enough to get to their age, it you just let's just hope the people looking after you or doing that are a bit kinder, because I, I think people always think you know sometimes. Well, yeah, you're just a, a an older person waiting to grow up. Mm. <laughs> That's really it all it is, isn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, and I heard I heard a, uh, a comedian say one time, "Make sure you're kind to your children because they will be picking your nursing home." <laughs> you know? And it's quite true, and and that as well. But it's uh, yeah, uh, sometimes people think everybody's there for them. But I always feel good that you know my mother was, and father was very good to me, brought brought me up. But I'm paying it back, and I don't sure. mind one little bit because of the said. They did their best, and I'm doing my best to to look after. Uh, well, my father passed away in 1995, but my mother's next week on next Tuesday on American Independence Day. Mm -hmm. She's uh, 90 years old, so I oh, always wow. remember it. Never forget Fourth of July, can I? I can. It's an easy birthday. It's very hard to forget. So, mm -hmm. so she's 90. So, I'm. Uh, Book, um, I've got a few days off. I've got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday off next week, but my brother's coming down from our equivalent of your Florida, but from Queensland. He's coming down with him and his wife, and we're, I'm taking mum, and we're going out for lunch. Excellent. So, excellent. For, so you know, and that's what she likes, just something simple, but that's what she likes, and that was good. But as I said, she'll enjoy that as well. But uh, And I, I quite... I, I quite honestly do enjoy her company as well. So obviously, like you did with your father, it's something that you do enjoy their company of. And you know, when when mum's not there anymore, I'll definitely miss our conversations because you you know you do talk to him the more like a friend than a parent. I would think most of the time. So yeah, yeah. At, at, at this point, I mean, like you say, my dad was always accessible to talk to. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, there were times when he was busy, had things to do, and he couldn't you know, sure. just stop everything he was doing, of course. But if you went along with him, 
in mm. what he was doing. He was happy to show you what he was doing. He was happy to to have a conversation with you about, you know, different things that were bothering you or things that you wanted to talk about. And, and again, sometimes you had to follow him around while he was doing things, but, but he was always, uh, you were always, he was always easy to talk to. Uh, but like you say, he graduated in 1952. <laughs> so when he graduated from high school. <laughs> and so, um, you know, the different things about the paddling that they were doing and, uh, you know, the, the spelling words, you remember they were talking about the spelling words that on Monday, if you missed a spelling word out of the, you know, you had the same spelling words for the week. If you missed one on Monday, you got one lick with the paddle Tuesday two. <laughs> Wednesday three. So, you know, so you heard me say, boy, that's some negative reinforcement. <laughs> and his, his best friend missed words all the time. And so he was, he was getting, you know, probably 15 weeks a week you know, out of it because of the, he just felt, couldn't figure felt, out how to spell things. <laughs> you could understand why you, you would be true and to not go to school then because you, you yeah. certainly would have a reason not to go to school, wouldn't you? But yeah, they we, think, Miss, miss missing Fridays all the time, <laughs> and like now, you uh, the poor teachers can't say no. You got that wrong. That's even too upsetting. You can't. Oh, yes, yes. Touch. And if you say, "Oh no," you can't say wrong anymore. It's got to be that's incorrect. <laughs> yeah, but I, you don't even know if you can do that. Or, yeah, I mean, it's it's it it is that that was a part of what what we were talking about was the way that everything is so different now that you're treated artificially in school mm. you're you're catered to and your psyche is catered to so so much that when then whenever you go out into the world all of a sudden no one cares about you anymore except for what they can get out of you an employer you know not not saying you can't have a friendly employer but uh, especially yeah, but if you they... work in a large industrial or a large organization then you are just a another cog in the wheel so they, you know, no, you can easily be fired and they don't care a thing about you. You're just an asset in this corporation. And so that is such a new concept to kids coming out of school these days because they've been, they've been coddled, I guess is the only word to use all of this time. You know, everybody gets a trophy, no matter how good or bad you do, you know, and, and it's, it's just, but then all of a sudden you get out of the world and I'm sorry, they weren't able to change the world to make them coddle you like that. And just the, the rude awakening that kids have when they come out of that environment of, you know, everybody worrying about their feelings and suddenly nobody cares anymore. That is so shocking to them. But I must admit, when I came out of school, I there wasn't a shock. I knew what the world was about. You, mm -hmm. you definitely got told, no, that wasn't good. You can't do that. And because people that say, don't worry, you can do anything you put your mind to. You can do anything. <laughs> Sometimes you've got to be told, not like you, you've got to be re realized that some things you can't do. They just said, yes, you've got to reinforce them so mm -hmm. you're not negative. But there's sometimes somebody is going to be better than you somebody's going to have more talent mm -hmm. and like we said the other week we've come to the conclusion we've passed that are we ever going to be great at this or that we've gone past that age and we've come to that realization but i do in most of the things i i do i know i can put my hand at this i can do this i can do that but there's other people who would do it fantastically and but i don't let it worry me because no matter what I do, they're gifted. They would have been able to do it well no matter what they did. Like some musicians, it's got nothing to do with a lot of the time how much they practice. Some are better. It's just it's just they're, they're just born with it, like artists and that. So, but as I said, it's the other way about uh, beating it out of people to say you can't do this and you shouldn't do this and not give them the chance to see if they do it. I don't know if you saw there was one... Um, uh, I forget his name now, but there was this uh, e-learning uh, seminar I went to down in Orlando, and they had this this talker there, and he was said he was told from a very young age, "You're hopeless. You can't do anything. This is you can't paint. It's rubbish. Just give it away. Don't try it." And it was just said, but he said, "Well, because he started off the conversation with saying, how many kids?" used to draw how many of you would draw pictures when you were uh, a small kid you all put your hand up it says you know how much people consider themselves a good artist now 
It's about two people. I said, yeah, because everybody told you you can't do that. Right. And he said, well, I was doing that. And you just do it. It's just natural. You just stop doing the things they said. But if they just let it go, sometimes you can. some great things can come out of it. And he got into it. They said, well, I thought, well, I'll give this a try again when he was in his later 30s. And then and while he was talking this, he was the, then he went this, we, after that, he put a, a song on, you know, about three minute U2 song or something. And he had a blank canvas. And with that, it was just squiggling a paint, a, a picture of doing a painting. Uh, it was one of these had no idea what it, it was, just looked like rubbish. You know, the, and the song finished and think what it was. Then he turned it from up, upside, then turned it right where and it was Steve Jobs. Yeah. Perfect. He did it up, up, upside down, yeah. And he did it even upside down, and he said he'd only started painting, and and, and he showed a good thing. He said, "What the what it does?" He said, "These pictures," he says, "I do now." He says, "They cost a lot of money." He said, "People pay a lot of money for these pictures now." He said, "Fear stops people." From, so what he says, "I'm going to give this picture to somebody in the audience," and he said, uh, "He said." Uh, uh, Whoever I give it to has got to come up here and do something on the stage on this. But he said, so now you, you can either do this. You come up in here and open this letter, open this thing on the on the stage and it will tell you something to do. No, he hadn't given away the picture yet, he, but he wasn't doing it. But he said, he said, fear stops you from doing it. He said, you come up and open this letter on the stage, but with only one condition, you have to do what it says on in that envelope he said but you've got an option you can do it or you can give it to somebody else what do you want to do so he says i'll give it to the colleague next to me so he said okay fair. so that colleague got up onto the stage and at that stage then he opened the thing up and he said oh you are the proud owner of this picture <laughs> Take and then he said see this gentleman's cheated himself out of ten thousand dollars because he was frightened Right, and he said that's what, and that was a real good example of said fear. What fear does to us all, as I said, it was quite uh, quite a good eye opener to say, well, and you do that yourself, don't you? You know, if you can get out of it, if it's a bit frightening, you won't do it. But as I said, it could have been something else. But the the fear made him think, well, I'm not going to do it. But the the fellow he nominated got this picture that was going to be worth quite a, a bit of money. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the conference, what he did, he had another one. He did one of uh, Madonna. I thought, oh, no, Marilyn Monroe, he did that. And, uh, and they said, as part of the conference, what he says, I've hidden the other two. I'm going to hide the other two round somewhere in the in the conference building so two more people will find them somewhere. So mm, it was well, it's more you attempt to things, got some clues on where they were. But it was... Uh, quite an eye-opener and they're the sort of things I really get a, a buzz out of where somebody shows you something practical not forcing it down you but just shows you uh, where you can do great things if you're given the chance and as uh -huh. I said the kids are given a great deal of chance but I still think there's got to be that little thing that says well there's, there can always be somebody better than you and accept that <laughs> um, well that's a, that's one of the things we did when we were raising our daughter i was having a conversation with the lady that uh, i was working with at the time and uh we were we we're talking about our philosophy of the way we raised our daughter and so she just jumped in and said well now you've you told her that it's a man's world and she's not going to be able to do certain things because she's a woman and she's going to you know run into this and 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 run into that and you know i mean have you prepared her for that and I said, absolutely not. No. I said, the last thing I want her to do is to be paralyzed by fear when mm. she runs into that specific problem. I said, what we told her was she is going to run into obstacles of all different kinds to whatever it is that she wants to do. She has to persevere and get through it. Now, if I magnify the idea that she's female, then mm. the fear that she would be paralyzed by when she oh the ultimate obstacle in the cosmic world. Well, no, to her, that was no different obstacle than any other obstacle. It was just another thing to surmount. Mm. And, um, you know, she has done really well and is, and continues to do well. And like you say, it's not, it's not something that I wanted her to be paralyzed with fear about or to build up this big, 
you know, resentment before she even got there. So much expecting this that she would overreact when she got there. No, this is just another obstacle. Uh, you know, I mean, being rich, being poor, being, you know, whatever these other things are, being female. So, <laughs> you know, she just continued to move forward and did not let these things stop her because she wasn't paralyzed with fear because we didn't prepare her to to reach the ultimate cosmic obstacle and, and go, oh, my gosh, here it is. Am I ever going to? No, no, no. It's just another obstacle. Move on. Well, we had, uh, <clears throat> well, you know, I'll do a lot with the horses and that. And one of these trainers that are. Uh, talk to and he used to do fantastic things with horses mm -hmm. and want them people used to bring their horses to them saying you know i want i, I want to, you to uh, work my horse this is what's wrong he said i don't want to know mm -hmm. he said don't you don't you tell me what's wrong because he said it might be something you're doing he said but i don't want it i'll just get on the horse and see what it does mm -hmm. because he says if i know what the problem is I'll go looking for it and it will happen. It's, it's the same thing as you just said there. So if you, you, you favor that thing, you go looking for it, you usually will find it, but he'd get on there and said, well, nothing down, nothing wrong with the horse. It must be you. <laughs> <laughs> now we know. <laughs> and said so a lot of things with horses, it's you find there's uh, you know, I've seen in the past, a, a horse does a strange thing with a person. And they says, oh, that's strange. And then they get another horse and it does the same thing. But as I said, no, it's something that they're doing that annoys a horse from both of them that keeps doing it. But it's uh, quite, <laughs> quite strange how they're quite smart creatures. And on a lot of the time, they, I've seen a lot of books. There was this book I read. It was by a, you can't, a Native American. You can, I'll make sure I've said the right way now, or so politically correct. And because they're the best horsemen in the world, aren't they? The, the Native Americans to just bareback riders. They're they're classed well, as the best horsemen. Well, as far in, as in, as far as like those who have had uh, that type of you know training, and I mean you know they were raised in that. Yeah, you know, I'm sure they were, but I don't think the blood gives it to you. I believe it's just the lifestyle that that, that might might life. give, give that to you. But they, they, one of the things we're saying, they said there's never, there's not, no such thing as a bad horse. It's just a bad rider. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they said, well, if the bad horse started out good, it's just a rider's made him that way. Usually, that's that's the, the, the thing that they were saying. Well, that's true. Uh, at the same time, you've heard of these people called horse whisperers. You know, yes. can you can you imagine the horse whisperer coming up to the horse, and the horse looks at him and says. Oh, by the way, you would not believe what this rider is doing. I just want to prepare you for yes. the idea that when you talk to them, that this is happening. <laughs> <laughs> Probably does, because if they talk to the horses, obviously talking back to them, mm -hmm. because I have somebody else that was doing that a while back. Uh, they, they said, yes, I can sense what the horse is feeling and that. And, and I said, because I, I, I thought there was talking to the horse, and I thought, well, you know, you should should be able to ride a little bit better than if you can if you can talk to it and understand it. So. Yeah, it's like you know they have they have a microphone and there's like earbuds on the horse. <laughs> that's, hey, that, that's right. But it's quite strange. Like with the horse, they they know they can be a perfectly good horse, do everything right, and a different rider gets on them, they won't move mm -hmm. because they they're not silly either. They try it on a bit to everybody and say, "I'll see if I can get away with doing nothing." Ah, uh, green rider. I don't have to do anything. I can just saunter along. And they, it's just, it's the same thing. It's human nature. If you can, get, a lot of the time, if you can get away with it, you do. That's. It's just like that. Like a lot of the kids, if they can get away with doing that, they will do it. So that's where a little little bit of structure always comes in handy, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I, I think it does. Uh, what am I? Yeah, again, I have not had much to do with horses. It's kind of a funny story. Um, at one of our our parks, uh, we used to go camping at a place called Pipestem Park. Uh, in West Virginia, we would go camping. We'd stay in the lodge. They like, yeah, but they had horseback riding, and these were mostly rescue horses, mm -hmm. um, you know. And they just basically had the lead horses that the people rode, and then the rest of them were just following horses. And you know, the green people would get on them, and they would just plod along behind the lead horse. And so you didn't really do anything, really. You just held the reins loosely and just let the horse, you know, just kind of follow along and you went out the trails and it was cool and, and you know and uh you know they they made enough upkeep to take care of the horses which was you know a great deal for them and it worked out great well 
Um, the first time I was going to uh, ride, uh, now my wife, she'd been on horses quite quite a bit. And so they get her and they get her on her horse and, you know, they would say, they ask her, have you ever ridden a horse before? And she said, oh yeah, I used to ride around the meadows and, you know, this and this. And oh, okay. So they call for the name of this horse and the horse comes out and they get her installed and, you know, <laughs> then they look at me and they said, have you ever ridden a horse before? And I said, well, when I was four, they put me on a horse and I fell <laughs> off and the guy kind of smirked and he yells, bring out easy. <laughs> easy <laughs> so you know they put me on they put me on easy so, <laughs> so it's always the case, isn't it that the, 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 you said your wife's got bring out lightning for her right and then bring you feel me here comes lightning and you think oh goodness he's he's going to be a bit frisky but he said that uh, yeah easy and i can see it would be a big clod big fat slow thing that's what you'll be expecting yeah it's got to make, <laughs> make make sure it's it's big enough to hold his weight but uh you know just kind of an easy going uh following type of horse and he can just kind of ride and be happy you know <laughs> it's, it's strange when you do those sort of rides when it's not your horse no matter what your experience is it's very hard to ride those horses because you don't you, you're just a passenger whatever the, right. the lead person whatever they do it they do and wherever it goes they go no matter what you do it's pretty yeah. much you, well, you just do they tell you to. I so, did maybe my second or third ride over you know the space of a few years. We go camp and we do it again. I did attempt to get the horse I was on to do something uh, slightly different. We were still following what? along, but instead of following the completely worn path, a couple of times I had the horse to go up high above a tree and then back down into the path. Oh, I, and so uh, that was. That worked out really well a couple of times, but the third time the horse made it clear that wasn't acceptable and tried to wipe me off on the tree. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been in the younger days in some of those rides before I was into horses, and you did the old, like the, you said, the trail ride and mm -hmm. the about a dozen horses. And every now and then, if he was on the wrong horse, your horse would say, I've had enough. And it just turned around and bolt home. And then the people, oh, don't worry. Oh, what's that? He'll he's just gone home. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, of course, buck, buck, buck you off and then go home. Yeah, but sometimes, and then you get back and there's this person sat there with a white face because they were terrified. Oh, yeah, because, <laughs> oh, <laughs> so no. Dear life, just that they didn't fall off, but this yeah. horse has said, I've had enough, I'm just going home. So, yeah. But it uh, said that I always used to, as a kid, go to those rides, and I used to go on them because it frightened me to death, but it was a bit like going on these big roller coasters. You do it because you want the adrenaline, you want the fear. And we always, and I know there was this, there was this woman who used to take us out and you know, we go up here, round this corner, up this hill. And then you knew at this point you turn the corner and she got the big, whip, <laughs> and then off you went, but you were dreading it. But yeah, you loved doing it every time you knew she was going. And then she would chase you down, chase it, go with the behind you, cracking this whip and the, you couldn't do that these days with the occupational health and safety. You wouldn't, you would not get away with that because really that's so dangerous. But I suppose back in the seventies, there wasn't half as much things in the way as either. Whereas now it's too built up. You have to keep going further and further out until you get to these things. But uh, it was always quite good fun. Loved doing well, it. Well, I noticed when we were riding horses there, uh, like you say, that's the only place really that I had ridden horses. But we, when we first started, you would just go out and you would ride the horse and everything would be fine. You'd come back and, you know, you sign an agreement that, you know, if you get seriously killed, I mean, you know, the normal stuff like that. Seriously <laughs> killed. <laughs> yeah. You know, but, but we noticed sometime in the 90s, or so they started having everybody wear these helmets mm. like you know they do on bicycles they kind of looked like cowboy hats but they were basically protection based helmets you know for like that that happened to look like a cowboy hat on the outside which was actually kind of kind of entertaining but evidently they had gotten in some kind of trouble or someone else had and they wanted to make sure everything was uh you know fine fine in that regard um there's one other thing i'll talk to you about uh garvis uh reed of mm -hmm. the Cinema Toast Crunch podcast, uh, when he listened to to this last episode, which you know we spent a lot of time talking about them, he expressed some real interest in. Um, you were talking about getting rid of that Gene Roddenberry uh, 
<laughs> awful oh, shows and did. stuff like that. And uh, and he he really liked the idea of that because he's we've never seen anything like that around here. Um, and like you say, we would be more than willing to uh, to help you with the shipping or whatever. I have no idea what it would cost. But he would sure. love to get his hands on that for his collection. <laughs> It would definitely definitely be in America, but it's just, it's just nobody's game enough to put it out on the shelves because they're just too embarrassed. Mm -hmm. That's why I mean, it definitely would be out there. I'll definitely I'll think I'll get it together and then send it send it to you. So. Okay, no, like I said, let us let us know how much how much it costs. I know it'd be kind of expensive to send. Let let us know how much it is. We will totally uh, you know go 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 with you on the shipping. I'd, I'd appreciate that somebody else who who's caring to and likes some of the worse of things in life that will still appreciate well it I'll, I'll, he... I'll, I'll tell you a little thing on garvis one of his expressions is that movie was so campy and it was so bad it was good that's right <laughs> well, i must admit some of these things were bad but i thought oh really and i just still had to watch it i think it's earth it's called i think it's it was uh, just and he thought he thought earth, earth too no, just Earth. Just Earth. Earth. Okay, okay, yeah. He, 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 he was, he was talking about that. That, that might be something. But his, his eyes just lit up. He, he'd come to me at work, and it was like, oh yeah, you know, we, you know. But yeah, but yeah. but but yeah, he has about nine thousand movies. So you know, and and different, and even television series and things like that. And so this is something that he's never seen anywhere, and uh, he he's pretty excited about that. <laughs> well, the, the only thing is, just keep in mind. He, uh, hopefully, he'll have a multi-region. DVD player uh, because it's in region four. He so. made a specific point to tell me that yes, he definitely had one that he could play it on. <laughs> Being a collector like that, he has to have because you'd get picks things up from all over the world if, from different places. So, mm -hmm. oh, that's good. That because it's it's in such a big box, it doesn't fit in every anywhere anyway. Mm -hmm. It's you know, about three times bigger than a normal CD box, and it's just not very good anyway so mm -hmm. but that, that'll be good that I'll, I'll really that i'm contributing to uh his collection and it, so it's going to be saved for prosperity so I hate throwing can't, not never going to throw things away but that'd be good so just send me send me an email with the address where i send it to as well and i'll organize that so okay okay i'll just i'll, I'll just have it have you to send it to me and then uh, like you say i see him at work you know, every week. So I'll just, uh, I may watch a couple of them myself. And so I can you know, kind of cringe a little bit, you know, you know, the adrenaline and then, and then, and then I'll, then, then I'll give it to him. The, the, you know, it was that bad. I thought I'll watch this after I've retired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah when I can have a, have a big old bottle of Pepto-Bismol, you know, the, the stomach distress medicine or something beside of you. I'll only be able to watch it when I've exhausted everything else and there's nothing else to watch. But mm. then I'll go and watch that. But uh, I'll just, you know, may, if he enjoys it and thinks it's the best thing, <laughs> but, but he will do for collecting, for collector's item. But as I said, it's not old enough to be a real collector's item, but it's, I think everybody just jumped, jumped on the Gene Roddenberry wagon thinking, mm. oh, it's, he's done some good stuff. But yeah, good people do bad things as well, don't they? Well, well, well you, were, you run into somebody, and once they are so famous, then all of a sudden, you know, this artist who's been out there singing, and they, uh, someone's been writing all their songs, and then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. they write a song. Yeah. And it ends up being this huge hit simply because they wrote it. But I'm sorry, it's a really badly made song. <laughs> and But because of who they are, it actually goes somewhere because everybody wanted it because they wrote it but if you look at the structure of the song or the you know whatever it's really bad and you can tell though this must have been the first one that they actually wrote themselves <laughs> like a lot of these people though that the, when they get on a high they should leave it mm. because they make a lot more money in royalties of the way people but then they keep going and then people do get put off one them when they start writing their own things and doing that and think hang on they were never as good as they used to be because it's not just their talent it was the talent of the people around them that produced them a lot of the time so it's there's a lot of factors in that so uh, and you just said people say oh, i'm famous i can do anything i want now and, well people are a bit more smarter than that these days so they don't mind criticizing and they'll say no that's rubbish and they'll soon turn off you that was uh, that was one of the things I found out. I, I guess you remember I told you uh, in an earlier show that whenever you, the trolls show up, that you've arrived. You thought like, that's right. Well, um, as soon as this video started going viral, 
uh, okay, and this, okay, this, this is the anatomy of a YouTube troll. What happens is they show up on your video and then they just make a mean comment, just a harsh mean comment, something like, oh, this, this was a good one. Uh, they arrested the wrong fat guy. Oh, okay. You know, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everyone said, you know, you're a hoarder, you know, like you've got a, too much stuff. Well, I, I'm sorry. My house just got trashed, you know, but I mean, but, and I can say that back to them and all they do is, is throw out these comments. And then if you reply to them, That's then they know they've got a live one. But if you mm. click on their name and go back and look at their YouTube channel, yeah. they have a YouTube channel that doesn't have a single video. No, they, they, they right. don't have anything. And all they do is have a specific account just so they control yeah. people. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, pit, it's a really pitiful life. Mm -hmm. These people must be having if they mm -hmm. can't make a video of their own. And like you say, all I'm doing is picking up my phone and just doing stuff, you know, without doing a lot of editing or anything. And it's, they have to be so pitiful if they, I mean, you know, they can't make a video of their own, but all they do is get on there and try to trash people so they can get in arguments with them. I mean, what kind of a life can that be? That's also as well, people like that usually want notoriety, but it's in an anonymous account, so they never get that either mm -hmm. because they don't put their real names on there because or else because as I said, the, oh, no, well, I better not do that because people might not like me, but they want the notoriety. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll never get it on there because now people are over that and like you said if you haven't got a few nasty comments on your videos well it, it, nobody's watching it it's a bit like um, when i'm buying something if i look at the reviews and even when the whether the good bad or into if i see something that doesn't have any bad nasty horrible people saying really disgusting things about it, i know well it hasn't been out long enough. Nobody's got got it. You, you've got to have some of these bad reviews. Nothing's perfect out there. And even if it is, people, you can have the best thing that nothing, but there will be somebody complain about it. And you said people who complain about stuff nearly always com will do a more a bit, bigger, better job complaining about it than the people that are happy. I always say that to people at work. As I said, people who are happy, we should really, when we're happy, we should write letters phone people up and say thank you thank you but we don't we only phone up and say phone them up when we're dissatisfied and something's gone wrong as i said if everybody said just imagine because when somebody phones up said i'm the first thing you think is a problem you never think thank you very much and, and i did that the the other week with the, the well i got my tv on saturday from there and the people were on time and i thank them very much and i'll let them know that sent an email sent a text to the salesman i said please pass on my best regards to your your delivery people and i said a friend of mine bought one at the same time the week before i said he got the same safe on time they said between seven and eight they were there mm. and i said how many times do you get that but as i said most people just said well that's what they're supposed to do i said yeah but that you know if you pass it on those people We'll say, oh, thank, he appreciated that. I'll keep doing it. But if you don't, eventually, a good person, a good delivery person, turns into a bad one because they don't get. They say, well, I'll do a good job, but nobody seems to appreciate what I do. So mm -hmm. I always think it's good to go out of your way and say thank you to people, and you know when they've done the right thing, and let the people who who employ them and do that uh, let them know that they're doing the right thing. Yeah, people people seem to think that if you actually give someone a compliment or you you know, that it makes you somehow vulnerable and beneath them. I mean, that the fact that you're giving them an advantage over you, if you actually show appreciation and let them know how much you appreciate what they've done and how they've, what, what, what a good, good favor they've done for you. Um, mm -hmm. I don't see that at all. I mean, if anything, trying to lift other people up and, you know, you see somebody mm -hmm. doing well, give them some encouragement. I mean, because, you know, that, that just, that could change their whole day, <laughs> you know, or change their life in some cases, depending on what's what, what's actually going on. I mean, why not be nice? Why can't we be nice? You know. Mm. And and I, I quite honestly, I just do get so much out of that. It's and <laughs> when I do get angry, and you know, sometimes you can get angry, and you get up with 
upset with people. I'm one of these people that I can get angry and upset with people, but then I get even more upset because I'm upset with them. Mm. I can't, I can't stay angry. Those people don't usually know what, but as I said, I, I, I get more upset than that because it's life's too short. I think I can stay angry for about five minutes mm. and then I will, Always the one who will always go, look, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that because it makes me feel worse than, than anything. But it does good to vent your anger a little bit. Just for, But as I said, that's about as, as bad as it gets. But you apologize, But some people don't like, don't like to apologize. And even if I'm wrong on something, you know, I'm doing the right thing and somebody uh, said, well, I'll admit, so I'm sorry, I've upset you, even if you know it's not me who's upsetting them because... You've got to give way sometimes and, and let it out because other some people are always right. <laughs> oh, well, now, I have noticed that there are people around you that really need to be the boss. They need to be the mover and shaker. They need to feel like that they're telling you what to do. Ah, just let them do it if it makes them feel better. Oh. He's talking about the actor Michael Caine. Mm -hmm. uh, he was, I saw in an interview uh, the other day, it was actually a, a documentary on Roger Moore. Uh, oh, okay. we had seen it a long time ago, but you know, Roger Moore passed away here recently, but anyway, Michael Caine was saying that the most violent that he had ever seen Roger Moore be ever was when he was explaining to him how much he hated violence. <laughs> <laughs> he said he was just, just, you know, uh, demonstrating and telling him how much he hated, he hated violence and everything like that. Um, uh, one thing I'd like to say before we go is another thing we wanted to do on the 50th episode was to announce that we do have a Facebook page for the weekly catch up, uh, facebook.com slash the weekly catch up. And that'll take you right there. And, uh, like you say, we'll be putting the video version of, uh, the show on, uh, on there every week. And actually there's a, a link to the burglar video. If anyone is interested in, in, uh, seeing that, um, which it seems like a few million people have been, <laughs> but, uh, oh. well, actually there's, the, there's another site that had over 4 million hits on the video. <laughs> so it's kind of a, it's all oh, over geez. the place, but, uh, uh, but anyway, that, that, that is on there, the uh, burglar video, but at the same time, um, all of our new episodes. And like you say, you just be able to click right there and start watching the video right there on Facebook. So anyway, facebook.com slash the weekly catch up. Pity you didn't get a penny for every view. Uh, yeah, actually the, uh, the 4 million people didn't even uh, put the website, right. They put it somewhere else. And I didn't get a single hit from it. No, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Pity put there and said anybody free to use this just quote quote my site you say oh yeah well quote there yeah, whatever and just have got well, no, it wrong, they, so. they 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 put a site that sounded familiar sounded similar and those people must have got an awful lot of traffic and of course they probably checked where <laughs> it was coming from and it was kind of like Shh. <laughs> that's right they, they, all, all they wanted it to there mm -hmm. anyway so thank you once again mr holbrook and You're welcome, so, sir Say hello to your your wife, and say I'm glad she's back with you, and that you've you've got your your companion back. So and it's, the cat it's good it to all... have, it's good to have her back, and the cat seems really super ha happy about oh, that too. That that's right, because cats are a bit funny though. The the cat would still be upset a bit because they don't like the change in the house, do they? they well, I will like... I, I will tell you one thing though. Of all the animals that we've had, this is the first time that I have had an extended period of time with just me and the cat alone. I mean, we've mm -hmm. had cats before and her and I have developed a much closer relationship that is lasting even after my wife got back because, you know, okay. obviously she was always, but the cat really has an affinity for me now. And, and I do for her because I did not realize even when she was gone, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, cause she was gone and she was gone for about 40 hours after he come in and started smashing the house up. And, uh, I did not realize that how close I felt to her and how much I would miss her until she came back. Yeah, that's right. And then at that point, there's a picture of me on Facebook holding the cat and the cat's kind of, you know, <laughs> kind of almost crawling into me and I'm sitting there and I'm looking real stern because I'm trying to keep a, keep a straight face and not tear up. You know? <laughs> oh, well, that's good. Anyway, I'm glad everything's back to normal. Well, nearly until you, well, you, you get, there's, there's a the lot of work to do, but like I say, we'll see. Okay, well, we'll catch you next week. The next show from number 51 on the 5th of July. So after you've had your big, are you, you're off next Tuesday, are you, or do you still work on the Tuesday? Well, I, I could have volunteered to work, but I have chosen not, not to. 
So you've got the day for American Independence Day. So yes, 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 we do. See what you've got to get up to on that holiday. So we'll have a talk about that next Wednesday. So, okay. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and bye for now. Thank you so much for listening. Links for a free subscription, feedback, and everything else we do is at holbrooknewmedia.com. You can find all things Jeff Blanchard at jeffblanchard.com.